Just me and you? I think so. Oh, we're live. Oh, shit. What's going on? What up, Tio? Hey, how's hey. it going, Benny? Hey, stranger. Aren't you, aren't you Benny Ashburn of Crown, the, the dope CEO of Crowns and Apple Brewing Company? Aren't you Tio Hunter, the CEO, head of operations, and lead janitor for Crowns and Apple Brewing Company? Hey, for first and foremost, uh, hello, everybody joining us. Um, we are so excited to be a part of this conversation regarding hip hop, culture, and craft beer. Right. Um, Jen Price, uh, first of all, hats off to Miss Jen Price. Um, what, what, such an incredible resource and champion of diversity, inclusion, and racial equity. Um, we always uh, kind of joke about it, but um, we always talk about Jen being literally the most transparent person yeah. as it relates to business and craft beer than anybody we've ever seen. So uh, that said, cheers to Miss Jen Price. Cheers to Jen Price. And cheers to our other panelists who are coming. It looks like we lost Nappy Roots and Ray Keenan. Wait, 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 hold, hold on, Bibi. Uh, Bibi. 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 Listen. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, we had, we, had to, we had to buy some time. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Hey, hey, hey. I hey. swear to God, bro. How do y'all how do y'all walk through life without this not just being like I feel like you should have a band. I feel like you should have a band just walking around, you know, like in uh what's hey. that? I'm gonna get you sucker, that's your theme song. Y'all right. have, have a theme yeah. song. All right, all right, we're, we're gonna pass over the, the, the keys back to the OG. What's up, family? What's going on, y'all? How everybody feeling tonight? Y'all looking good out there, beautiful, beautiful black people? Yes, always. That's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I wanna shout out everybody out there in virtual world joining us tonight, man. This is um something really cool for me, just catching up with some people I haven't seen in a long time, personally in person, but just in general, Scales, I ain't seen you probably in about 10 of the things at bro, least. 20, maybe. Try 20. It's maybe, been a long maybe, time, bro. Maybe 20. This is this is a grand bro, right bro. here. Good to see you, fam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. It's good to see you, Benny. Good to see you, Terry. Man. Yeah, man. Skinny, what's good, man? Good Look, good, man. we're gonna start it off. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight at the uh Crafted for Action Beer Con. Uh, I want to shout out. Well, okay, that's how we start. That's how we start. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, hey, look. H I mean, we, you know, shout out to everybody in Atlanta. So we got to start with that new HBC. Hey, hey, hey. That's actually yeah. pretty dope, right there. I need, I need a case right there on deck ASAP. It's coming. Okay. We, okay. we got some news. We got some news to drop at the end of the uh, at Is the that conference. Right? So. Yeah. Oh, you guys, y'all home coming ready? Okay. Always. Oh. Like, like my man Sugar Free said. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. So, hello. Hey, hey hello. Well, I got to give a quick shout out too, because we over here drinking beer, like really exclusive stuff, man. No label on this beer right here. Ooh. Shout out to my bro um, over at Hip and Hops in ATL, man. Um, first, first black owned brick and mortar brewery in, in the state yeah, of Georgia. Yeah, um, yeah man, drink with me. Yeah, so, we didn't even got a label. He brought us a special. Special package over there. That's like the equivalent to a white label in uh, in record terms, huh? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, actually, actually, that's a pretty fucking good beer name. No label. Yeah. No label. Hey, I, I want in. I want in. Collab, collab, fam. That's all I'm talking about. That's how it works, right there. No labels. I want to shout out Jim Price, of course, the curator, the the person who actually is is pa so passionate to bring all this together. Atlanta Beer Boutique for bringing us all together in this room tonight to talk about the influence of our culture, urban culture, black culture, the culture in the craft beer space. And I want to shoot right. you, you, you beautiful uh, entrepreneurs for even stepping into the lane and, and giving us some options for my own people to um to partake in. This is this is actually pretty dope. So the name of the actual panel is Craft Beer in Hip Hop: Culture Appreciation or Culture Appropriation. I think that's a, a hot button topic. So um, you guys are pretty familiar with the space. So I'm gonna let anyone who wants to jump in from, from the top and just kind of throw throw to it. 
because I think I know what the answer is on it, and I, I'm, I'm gonna give my, my partake on it after that. But anybody can throw in is it, is it appropriation or appreciation? Depends on I'm gonna let the MCs take it first. I mean, because uh, to be frank, like what we do is in our brand is we pay ode to the craft. Um, sure. so I think uh, I speak for Benny and myself, uh, brothers, please take take the lead. Uh, thank you. Uh, for us, as we travel around across the country, our goal was to um, meet people who wanted to come to our shows from a brewery. Mm. You know, and so a lot of the times uh, we would see these breweries, we would take the tour, the uh, the owners and the brewers who would be groups or, or, or hip hop in general, you, you walk through there, they're playing hip hop. Um, we would get them to come to our shows is how we kind of got into this. It's like, we can go there and siphon off some of their crowd when the bar closes to come hang out with us at our show. So we've always been trying to, to cross over the lines between hip hop and craft beer. So we know there's a line there and we know that there's people on their side that want to enjoy what we do as rappers. And and as rappers, we want to enjoy a good craft beer before we go on stage. And so uh, we've seen both sides of the fence as we travel. Okay. We've seen beers that like, okay, wait a minute, what are you doing? Like, that's not cool. You know, or we've seen people that's like, you know, they just want to be a part and want to help bring uh, hip hop to craft beer. Mm -hmm. So my, my view of it is a lot of times I think it shouldn't happen. I think we should be kind of holding our culture what we do, but I think mm -hmm. some of the times that I see it, I'm not offended by it. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. in regards to them uh, coming into our neighborhoods and putting a brewery, you know what I'm saying? And gentrification in a sense, going into a low end neighborhood and buying the, the getting the property for cheap and putting a brewery, which is you know, in one way it could be helping the neighborhood, another way it's raising the taxes where the people that live in it can't afford to stay there anymore. And then you know that happens all the time all over the country. But we go out and then everyone moves in, and then when we move in, everybody wants to move out. Yeah, uh, I think it's a thin line between what's cool and what's not cool, in my opinion, in regards to how we rock. And we should be the gatekeepers of that on what's cool and what's not cool. We should check people for when you stepping over the line. And um, we should also be uh, receptive to people that want to still be a part of hip hop. There's white rappers, you know what I'm saying? There can be black girls. And, okay. you know, uh, you know, as that flips and flops, we have to be able to understand that's what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I see it. We see it for what it is. All right. And the relationship, the relationship needs to happen. Like, you know, a lot of these brewery owners, uh, 30 year old white men, they're hip hop fans. They grew right. up on hip hop. A lot of them grew up on it. And you know, I kind of look at it like it's all marketing, man. Everybody trying to sell something. There is some stuff that is distasteful. You know, I've I've seen a um a can, it was it was like a playoff of Biggie's ready to die. Mm. But it was uh it was uh it was like a white, white dude's face. Yeah. But it was the baby from ready to die. You know, some stuff ain't really tasteful. And and like Skinny said, we've been able to go and meet some of these guys. So we know who really like we kind of see who who respects it and who's mm -hmm. just trying to cash in. That happens in everything. Like these cans, these album covers that are made, they are made to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, they're made to sell a product. So somebody copy that to sell another product. They're trying to sell beer. You know, so it's, it's always been an interesting thing for me about the uh, culture appropriation. You know, I I think it's a very thin line. You look at how, I, w I would like to ask, let me ask, how do y'all feel about like the culture of hip hop adopting the whole like mafia, myth, like mafia culture? Like that's something we've done in hip hop. Is that right. culture appropriation? That's a fact. I, th I think I think part of that with hip hop was always about being aspirational as well, because we've always looked towards where the where the money was because we never had it in in, in mass. And when you look at the whole at the whole mafia or anything that represented getting money in America, those were the archetypes. So we we naturally modeled ourselves around it. You know what I mean? And we didn't always see that in ourselves in our own communities, unfortunately. You know, so, which is great about today. Now you get to see more. You know, more people of color doing well. More examples of what it means to be successful and be authentically black, which personally I didn't see a lot of that growing up. So 
you know, I can I can see why coming up, you know, you had the Wu Gambinos and right. you know, and and, and, uh, people and taking on, you know, mafia monikers because that's what looked like what would power look like. So I always understood what that meant, you know. So, but I'm 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 glad to hear that you know you guys are saying that there's been openness to actually you know you know being in the mix and no pushback or or has there been pushback? Uh, this is for, for for Benny and Tay. Like you guys have been up for how long now? Six years. We've been doing this now. About. Um, okay. I think. I think. Oh, thank you. I think out of this group, I'm probably the last to probably be introduced into craft. And I think as I learn more about it, it is a thin line. It's a very thin line because from the outside looking in, there are breweries that use hip hop culture references to sell a product. But to your point, when you actually meet the brewers, and you realize that's all they do is listen to hip hop, that's all they grew up on, that's what they know. You're like, okay, if, if, if most of these craft breweries are representative of the culture of the owners and where they grew up and kind of their representation of how they live their life, then okay, I can understand the hip hop references because it makes sense for you. That is what you are used to. But I think way more than not, people are definitely using our culture like they do in most mm -hmm. beer products, anything to sell, to simply sell and to target our, our a demographic demographic of people who are, you know, don't don't necessarily know the difference. Right. You know what I mean? We just don't. I mean, 90% of us being in this craft beer industry um, really feel some sort of way about what big beer has done and how they've done such an amazing job of targeting black and brown communities in selling the worst possible products. Wow. In festivals, they hire big giant artists. They pay them lots of money to, to attach them to the brand. But why, why are they attaching them to the brand? Why are people making these choices? And why are we following so blindly mm. uh, with these brands that we're spending all of this money to support something that's not coming back into the community? So I think yep. the people on this panel have identified that wanted to take back some of that cultural ownership. And I think that is why we do what we do. That is why we are in this industry to make a change so that if we are gonna buy these products, at least we're buying them for ourselves, by ourselves and giving it back to the community. So oh. yeah. it's a thin line. Um, I, I, I feel extraordinarily passionate about this topic. Um, I get very emotional about it as well. Um, because when you really think about it, um, you're talking about an industry, um, and, and, and I'll explain what power looks like in a moment, but, um, you know, you're talking about a industry that has 8,000 plus, uh, white owned blue breweries, less than 1% black owned. And of those of that 1%, probably less than 1% actually have their own production facilities. So wow. what we're talking about is an industry of individuals who have resources who are utilizing a culture of individuals that currently aren't present in their industry mm -hmm. and to me when you put a moniker or language or an image on a can once it leaves you it it, it stands on its own so if it looks like hip-hop then a the person getting that beer are going to think that the individuals that put that out have mm. some affiliation and or have been granted access mm. to use hip hop for the sake of capitalizing. Um, right wow. now, we are living in a time to where Benny and I are are tired of letting things go unchecked. You know, to what my brothers just said now, like we, we, we're not having it. That doesn't mean that we're going to go uh, on witch hunts for people that that are projecting hip hop because hip hop in some instances is bigger than religion. In, 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 on this globe. And some people feel that passionate about hip hop in order to incorporate it and indoctrinate it or indoctrinate it into their philosophy in terms of cans, in terms of art, whatever the case might be. But when you um, put out a can and actually um, we make it a point, I'll, I'll call a brewery. I won't put them on blast, but I, what I will do is slide in that DM. I will pick up the phone. I will have a question and I will ask them genuinely why do you feel so strongly about this culture that you feel that you can put it on a can or put it into 
something that would ultimately be an indicator that you you have the receipts to do this, especially when the people aren't um, representative uh, in our culture. And ultimately, like, you know, I'll give you an example, Mumford Brewing in LA, mm -hmm. um, them cats probably have more of a right to put hip hop on their can than most breweries in the game. Them motherfuckers had a, a, a studio in LA where Peanut Butter Wolf, Jay Dilla, all the original Stone Throw uh, cats were putting together music. I get it, you guys got receipts, but you also have breweries like Evans Brewing somewhere in SoCal that literally named a beer WAP. Literally put uh, Megan uh, Stallion and Cardi B's image on this can. And that what it did is it gave everybody the impression that this was authorized. Yep. And that shit needs to go unchecked because at the end of the day, to finish that point, that is IP theft, straight up. And, and, and we all know either being in the industry, being in advertising, being in marketing, that that is lazy creative and it's theft. So um, th that's really what, what, for us, the conversation had been around. Yeah. Can I, can I just, oh, go ahead, Scott. Yeah. Well, I feel like it should police itself as well. Like, people should know what's authentic and what's not. Like, you know, people use rap music and hip hop for everything. You know, like, YouTube makes a living off of it, commercials make a living off of hip hop. As gatekeepers, I guess that's more of the consumer saying, you know what, I don't like the way y'all using this particular uh, marketing scheme. I don't like how y'all using what? That's like you said, lazy. That's lazy. But, 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 but see, the, the, the difference between that scales at the end of the day is someone it. is getting a royalty check. So someone is getting paid for that. That's true. And, and what we're talking about, we're talking about the unchecked industry of craft beer who already has a significant issue with, with, with breaking down barriers to getting into their industry, utilizing a culture with zero attribute. All right. And and to me, that, that, that's a problem. They were checked. Evans Brewery ended up taking down all of the artwork for those cans because mm -hmm. the whole industry came from them and was like, hell no, you're not about to do that. And they, they, what, got, they took it out. But it's on pop radio, my bad. Go ahead. Well, I, I, my thing is, do we want to address why it's happening? You know why this is happening versus it's happening. Do, do we want to be proactive or reactive to the situation? Is how I would look at it. Mm -hmm. they're, running mm -hmm. it's a problem. they're running out of shit to make names on because they've been holding down the industry for so long, but we've not been a part of it. That's why they need us to be a part of it so they can get that new uh, market segment that's out there floating around. Let and me ask we, this: as, as as black brewers in in the uh, hip hop community. Uh, lean on more of yes, there are a bunch of black beers from rappers out there that you should try out. Now, those black beers from rappers are in probably a white owned brewery, but that will give those rappers who have a lot of disposable income the idea that we had about starting our own shit mm. instead mm. of spending our money in strip clubs on rims and systems and, and you know, bullshit. We decided to put our disposable income where you know where we have fun at and our passion. And I would say in a few years, I think that will weed itself out. I think you'll find out that that's not going to be receptive right. because it's, they're just trying it out. But there's more and more people like us. think we can weed that out. I'm not with it. I don't like it. Y'all sound like screwed in the top right now. Yeah, your signal is, is breaking up a little bit, brother. Nah, it's a great point. You were you saying something. Yeah, you were saying some great shit, but your signal was breaking up a little bit, Skinny. Oh, shit. Oh. Hey, nah, you, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing you can do with, with the technology, man. Technology sometimes going to fail you. It's all right. Yeah, we're so, back uh, in the back of our brewery, man. So let me ask you guys this. Do you think that the, the industry is moving towards trying to market towards hip hop because hip hop is popular or because black people are becoming more familiar with craft craft brewery and craft beer? Both. Both. Because like I, I will say though, I, I I am starting to feel it is because black people are people are starting to recognize mm -hmm. that black people are getting into craft beer. And because yeah. we are the number one buying power and spending power, 
they're like, oh, word, right, 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 right. So black oh, people are like, right, fear now, right? So let me, let me see who I can find to, again, a lot of the bigger white brands are partnering with, you know, these artists like they did with the Budweiser's and the Colt 45 and all of that. And it feels like it's recycling itself a little bit, but I think as long as we continue to stay as true and authentic to what we're building, to your point, it will weed itself out because we'll still be here and the generational wealth that we're all creating will sustain way beyond those kind of quick hits of not so great products being pushed on the community. Yeah. I mean, well, well in my opinion, like you know, black people and, and let's get really to it. Black culture mm. is a thing that's now starting to be siphoned off. And, and really it's about who has the means to frame their culture in anything, you know, it, it, who has the means, who has the capital to frame their culture and leverage it in a way that allows you to create a bot business model, to extend that business model, and then to share that information with someone else who also has that same idea. Mm -hmm. What's been happening, dude, dude, people are putting Biggie on, on cans for the past decade with, 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 no, with no checking. People have been putting Matt Dre on cans in the Bay Area with no wow. checks and balances. Like that shit has wow. been happening. The, what, what's, what's happening now, there is a reckoning. There is a reckoning because someone is going, whoa, 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 hold on. You telling me you in a black neighborhood, you walk into your brewery, you never playing hip hop, but now you got a biggie can That's and that so. biggie can is in distribution to where no one knows who it's coming from. Right. So, you know, it's, it, it's really bad. That's up. bad. That's bad. Oh, yeah, you can't you can't use people's likeness to make money out there. Like I feel like that's just shouldn't be done in no business. You know, it's, but it, it's a it's the, the thin line is making sure people are inclusive, but at the same time not offending us. You know, and and you get, I, I you know it's kind of tough to balance that out. I'm sure for some people. Wow, I like to ask uh, skinny. Skinny and scale uh, specifically being in the South, you know, have you felt like because I live in the South as well. Have you felt any, you know, visceral pushback from from the, the craft community in a, in a different way than maybe uh, Benny and Taylor have? I have. Uh, you're saying pushback from us getting into the industry. Yeah. From getting into the into the spaces and places where you can actually build the brand and actually make it and, and, and have it to grow. And, and and be them being accepting of it and not pushing back and not like for instance you know so many products are trying to get shelf space or trying to get bar space and you know it's typically it's all these white brands out here that's been here for 20 30 40 50 years mm -hmm. have you felt any any kind of pushback to you guys trying to get in these spaces i haven't nah, not not for us yeah and to the point we was making earlier about um um, Y'all in that dumb neck, right? right? No, you're cutting oh, you're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's so people realize that craft beer is being oversaturated, but there's a whole market that hasn't been touched or discovered. I'm sure they're aware that there's a. Whereas. <laughs> They're clicking on guys, I'm sorry. They, 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 they got the, they got that dirty, dirty connection. <laughs> okay, we can hear you now. All right, you're back. You're back now. I'm sorry. Kind of back. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, hip hop. Um, uh, craft beer is oversaturated. Like they sold craft beer to every white person they could sell it to. So now it's like a new market of black people that are becoming more and more interested and each brewery wants to be the first to make contact. So they can't afford to be like that down here. Like they need us to come in there to give them that extra little bump they need. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I didn't know it was that bad out there in California where they was misappropriating to that level. Well, hey, hey, look, it, it, it's, been, it's been a ton of places and you also have to consider California. If a motherfucker feels entitled to do what they want to do, with no checks and balances and no one there to to, to question them, they're going to do exactly what they want to do. 
And, and even more to the point, I would say the major difference, uh, Keenan, between Atlanta and California is they need black consumers in Atlanta. You you you, you ignore the black consumer in Atlanta, that's your death certificate business wise. <laughs> yeah, in California, right. they don't need us. They don't need us at all. Uh, they, you know, you guys, so, so so it's one of the things to where for us, Benny and I use our entire skill set to not just promote and talk about our love for hip hop. But we're not that monolithic of a people as well, you know. Exactly. You know, hence why we talking about uh, HBCU. We got a beer talk that talks about the urban anomaly, which is the outliers, the one who are trying to spread this this love of entrepreneurship and things like that. There's there's there is a whole nother scope that, that DJ craft beer. I didn't try that DJ beer y'all got though. Our wheels of steel. Wheels yeah, of, I didn't even have it on me. Um, I'll agree. bring some out to you, fam. I think, I, being, I think being in LA, um, I wouldn't say it's been necessarily harder. It's it's just when we started, no one was having the, the kind of conversations that we were having, mm -hmm. um, particularly in California. Like, and you know, it is only recently that the conversations are starting to expand and we're really starting to see people show up on a very consistent, in a very consistent way. Um, but I also think if we were in any other city, I don't know if we would be able to, if Crowns and Hops would still be the same, you know? Mm -hmm. I think because of the scarcity and because um, there isn't a lot of people doing what we do, it allowed us to stand out in this, this, this void and be very singular. Like, hey, we're out here, we're making it work. We're, we're trying to make a change and be different. Um, and it felt so big because it is bigger than beer. It's always been bigger than beer. Um, right. And unlike Atlanta, there really aren't any places, period, in, in Los Angeles for black people to really congregate, have conversations, come together. Atlanta is like fucking Wakanda. Right. Yeah, I mean, basically, when you go to Atlanta and you, there's no place you can go and you won't see a surplus of other black people that look or feel like you. But here it's like, I don't know. Every every weekend, we're like, well, where do we go? What? Who can we call? What do we do? It doesn't really exist here like that. So it, it's it's a lot more jarring, um, and the void's bigger. That's funny you say that. When I moved out there briefly um, last year for a few months, I had planned on moving my entire family out there, and um, I found myself saying, "Where are the black people? Like, what is going on?" Atlanta really spoils you, man, and really puts you in a space of comfort being around your folks and, and having opportunities to be around people, not just, not just that look like you, but are in the same headspace or social economic space. You know what I mean? And, and that's a blessing, you know, cause being, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I had a question for you kind of from the outside looking in. Yep. Um, what industry would you say um, had literally complete an anonymity, did I say that word right? You said it. Yeah, um, to using and or leveraging hip hop culture without hip hop actually being involved. Can, can you can you can you cite any other industry that has been has done that or and not got people? and not got chin check for it? No. Yeah, and, 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 and that's that's my point. No, it, it, it's like there was no one there to do the chin checking, and if there was someone to say chin check, you know, the, the, to provide those checks and balances there was so few of us and we were so spread apart that they didn't take our concerns or our Very issue true. as, as, as it being something that was uh, relevant or, or, you exactly. know, something you even bring up. They didn't to, oh, to, that, to that point T, the, I think that's why the black people love beer and the brown people love beer shirts and merch and all that stuff hit a lot harder than even we expected it to hit because again people weren't taking us serious right mm -hmm. but the more that shirt popped up the more people saw the hashtag the posts and realized oh shit there's more than just the to and the bennies talking about this like this is actually something to be considered and people were putting that shirt on not even knowing it was attached to us which was totally fine mm -hmm. as a way to make a declarative statement when they step into a brewery or they go to a festival like, guess what? Black people like beer too. Fuck with us. You know it's what I mean? Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it just became 
it became as symbolic as wearing a, a HBCU shirt or you know anything that just brings people closer together. And I think that's that's how the movement keeps keeps building. It was like you were playing your flag in the ground, letting people know we're here. Well, 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 even that, but that we were already here. Right. And, 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 and I think that's what Skinny and Scales represented. I mean, they were already making it happen already, you yeah. know, either through contract, they were already doing it. You got L. Sharpton, who was probably one of the first dudes who literally started doing this, this bridge between hip hop and craft beer. He did a one of the first interviews I ever saw with L was L talking to DJ Quick about craft beer. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like it, was, it was groundbreaking. And that was almost a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, we always been here, but we weren't united like we were. Right. You know I mean? yeah. And I'm sure Skinny could attest to that. When we uh, finally connected at Fresh Fest, it was like seeing your long lost cousin. It was <laughs> the best <laughs> damn family reunion I've ever Bro. been to. It was like, yo, yo. It was no. it was immediate. Right. It was, it was immediate instantly. Right. Black Craft Beer Bill 2021. What's up? Why well, everybody knows each other by Instagram. Nobody knows each other's first name, but we all know each other's Instagram handles. Right, right, right. I love that. I love that. I do uh, I have a question about flavor profiles. Do you guys find that there's a certain flavor profile that we or we black people would like more than others. And what like what's the entry? What's the entry point for someone who doesn't necessarily know a lot about craft beer? What, what where would you you stare them to first to get them interested in craft beer as opposed to the typical Heineken, which I only knew for the first 25 years of my life? You know, you know, that's all I knew it was Heineken and Corona. So what, what what do we like most and what 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 is like that entry point that you think? I'm super interested in the answers for this too myself. Um, we've spent the last six months wait, you know, waiting on our license to open as a brewery, just giving away free beer, trying to find out what people like, like mm -hmm. black women, um, black men who, like you say, drink Heineken. You know, I, I think as black people, we like bold flavors. I definitely think we like something sweeter, you know. Mm -hmm for like, and that's probably any non-beer drinker. They want something a little sweeter. Uh, but I've had good success with the fruity beers, mm -hmm. fruity non-IPA beers, like um, um, a Hefeweizen. We got a peach Hefeweizen that we've been pouring lately that people really like. Um, it's amazing. I, I need a case. Yes, I'll be yeah. I'll be, I'll be yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would almost I got some great recommendations too for you, but I've just found that the bold flavors work better for us. Sometimes that means sweeter, you know, heavier, uh, yeah. high ABB beers. But it's something that we constantly trying to figure out. And I would love to hear um, what Benny and Tio have, have to say, you know, from their standpoint. Um, I, would, I would open up by, like, one of the first things that I ever asked a professional – a professional beer panel before and that's like how do i bring craft beer how do i make black folks um more interested in craft beer and i'm, I'm talking to like ogs in a craft beer game like sierra nevada cats and the dude gave me the bluntest most honest question that i still prescribe to today he said you can't say shit. there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can make your responsibility is to give them the beer and let their palate tell the truth Mm. Options. That's mm. all we want. We don't like being put in a fucking box. Who I likes like that? that? That's what Big Beer did. It's Big amazing. Beer. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but Big, I mean, dude, we got a stout. We got a hazy IPA. We got a clear IPA. We got a crazy IPA with me looking like a karate. Glass <laughs> um, what is this? We got crowns yes. and axes. What is this? That's crowns and axes. That, that, that's what, our, what, kind of it? what kind is it? That, that's a strawberry guava goes. Oh, first, shit. let me say this. Um, oh, yo. <laughs> Shout out to Swerve. Shout out to Kev Irvin, Kevin Irvin. We just went ahead stash. I owe you one, bro. I owe you <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but just to, But just to finish the point, you know, our responsibility being in this industry and people discovering craft beer through us for the first time is mm -hmm. to give them a scope. You know, to give people a scope, you know, we, we, 
we, we, we are so, we, like I said, we are not monolithic. And, and even more to the point, our taste buds are even, you know, less discerning. Like give the people yeah. something great because at the end of the day, HBCU has no fruit in it, but the hops that we used are rich with notes of stone fruit, of guava, of pineapple. And to mm. me, there's more of, a, of an opportunity with someone understanding that you could get the attributes from literally the four ingredients of craft beer before you add anything to it. And then the doors are, are kicked the fuck off. Absolutely. Like, like, I can give you, my thought is because this was the, this was the, the turning point for me was a, as a hazy. And that's probably why hazies do so well Mm -hmm. Because it is, it, it tastes like the polar opposite of everything you think about when you think right. about beer. It's not necessarily bitter. It smells amazing. It's got all of this, uh, you know, fruit forward profile. Like, I think the first time I had a hazy, I was like, what is this? This is a beer. This is, you're telling me this is a beer, right? Because again, I mean, it's just, the Heinegans and the Budweiser's and the Coronas, everything that's really flat and kind of watered down. Um, and you know, the first four years of our brand, all we did was events, and all we did was content, and all we did was tasting. So we, similar to what you guys did, we we it was research. You know, hindsight. You know, we've been doing our homework to understand uh, what it is that black and brown people are more accustomed or would would try and or come to our events, say, I don't drink beer. And then we'd like, just first you start with smell this, right? Cause that's, that's always where you get them. And you're like, oh, what is this delicious? And then they taste it and then everything changes. Particularly right. in my case for, I've experienced with black women who to me are the hardest converters in my, <laughs> in my opinion. Cause they really are like, I do not drink beer. The ones that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I can see that. Between the hazy and the, the sours and the, the fruit, this will yeah. work. Tarted ales, yeah, they're oh, like. Hey, hey, look, that, that's an older beer. Um, like, hey, trust me, fellas, I got y'all, man. Yeah, I, I mean, it's holding its own, though. I mean, it's holding. It's good. It's but good. that's that's a good place to start if you want to try introduce a nice hazy and let just watch their entire face. Let let let, let their pot. If, if, really if, real, real quick, funny story. I actually did a beer tasting with a bunch of Benny's friends once. And okay. I brought probably one of the more sacred bottles, uh, which is called a bottle, uh, Degard. Um, it's a brewery that does sours. Um, they do some of the best sours in the world. Okay. Bro, I poured all these incredible black executive queens, uh, this <laughs> bottle, and then I went to go chop it up with one of my boys who was in a room. And when I came back, they were muddling fruit all up in it. And oh, I he mean, got, literally. He, got, he was hot. Oh, Bro, but to me, my heart broke. It, but I mean, dropped. And them sisters looked at me and said, "Brother, you gave me the beer. I could do whatever I want." And I had to check myself because yeah. once I gave them the beer, it wasn't mine anymore. I let their yeah. their pilots told them what to do to that beer. Right, and that was right. just fun. We right. had it in wine glasses. Like it's a whole like you. It becomes your your own experience, and that's what we have come to realize, right? And I think that's the difference between your average craft beer snob, which is the culture is completely shifting from, you know, it's, you got to make it your own thing. Whatever you want it to be for you, there is a style that offers you something that makes you feel good and want to share a pint. You just got to, you just got to explore and be open to that. Well, I like what T.O. said too about, we want to be, we're not monolithic. So we do want to be respected when we walk in. Like we don't want, I, can, I don't want somebody to say, look at me and say, hey, this is, I but think you, you're like this. Yeah, I've been looking at everything. Like, let me, let me know what you got and I'll make a choice. So, you know, I, I do like that aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jessica, Jessica is like blowing this, these, these questions up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, 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 but again, you know, it's funny. It, it was, a, I remember hearing or reading this interview from Seal, uh, the, the singer, and he was asked once, why don't you put, why don't you write liner notes? Or why don't you put the lyrics of your song? And he's like, well, once I make the art and give it away, it's not mine, it's theirs. And if someone hears in it, um, what they want my hear. heart is broken, but I'm stronger than you think. And that's not what he read, what he wrote or what he said, right. but that's what they heard and they right. found mm -hmm. salvation in that. Then that's beautiful. That's then that's great. Point. You know, yeah. but, but, but the problem with hip hop, going back to hip hop and craft beer, 
is motherfuckers is putting Seal's lyrics on there and they ain't putting Seal, they ain't giving credit to Seal. No, they ain't credit credit. no, no licensing agreement, no nothing. They sampling. nothing. They sampling and they're not paying the publishing is what's happening. Mixtapes <laughs> all day. That's but how we, you want to say it. Before we move on to Keenan, um, you speaking about beer flavors, we've been trying some different stuff like beer, mo beer mosas, beer mimosas, um, they actually put that in the chat. They said you make a great, uh, a, a great, uh, yeah, they beer <laughs> cocktail, yeah, beer cocktail. Yo, they the one. We we trying everything, man. We try real beer, bloody Marys, like, um, just switching it up, making it more exciting, right? You got to think outside the box for us. I think we got to think of this beer, shit, as I say it all the time, like George Washington Carver. You know what I'm saying? They don't want us to know that we actually started beer. They they tried to erase that from us when we came over here. Yeah. They don't want to. Know, they don't want us to know that we started this shit. And once we can do what George Washington Carver did with, wow. with the peanut and find over 300 uses for this shit, we're out of here, man. They they'll know that we're on a whole nother level. Like they had 300 years. To have, they had a 300 year head start wow. before us to even get started in this motherfucker. So you give us even three years, three more years of what we got. Both of us are gonna be light years ahead of what they was doing for the last 20, 30 years. Like real talk. That's this a huge That's a huge, huge market. Old, you you can can go sample it and make a hit out of it. You think we came up? You, you think we can't turn this crap beer shit, plain Jane IPAs and, and straight up whatever stouts and German <laughs> style traditional? You think we can't make a traditional African American style beer? Traditional over 300 years of knowledge and pain and struggle. In effort, mm. I don't give a mm. fuck. You're not gonna tell me I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You can't stop right. Let's go, it's a right. right on you, baby. Don't follow you. We're gonna take this shit over. What I want to yeah, see yeah. is that that <laughs> section of the Cicero course. As they hit every country in every region, I want the African American section of the Cicero course. Like you need to know about what they have done to oh. be an expert in the craft beer category. That's that's hey, to, 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 to Jen's point, man. That's what our community does. That's what our culture does. We're the fucking most innovative human beings on the planet. Bro, do you realize our, our ancestors created jazz, which spawned uh, rhythm and blues, which spawned rock and roll, which spawned hip hop. Dude, jazz in itself is mm -hmm. the first American art form that literally came from this country. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and, and you're telling me if we have the ability to take some brass and some strings and reinvent what you even thought the scope was available to Skinny's point. Just wait till you see what we do with this liquid, fam. Tell me. <laughs> it's just a matter of time, man. All we gotta do is stay out of jail, child support court, and uh, fucking getting pulled over, man. We might be all right at this motherfucker, man. Right? <laughs> And the IRS taxes. ain't no punk either. I was about to say, man. Man. That's bad taxes, man. Because out of all the motherfuckers you mentioned, that may be the worst one, goddammit. Yeah, exactly. Hey, don't forget, man. And, 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 the, and the funny thing, real quick, I would just put out there, just from an IRS standpoint, call them motherfuckers, y'all. Like, don't be running from them. The motherfuckers is nice as hell. They were, they were <laughs> lovely, lovely. And see, and, and that's an element, too, about, you know, I know it kind of deviates from, from hip-hop, but this is about. the the business of beer standpoint, like the, the these the, the ABC, the states, the like fuck what people say and how they be crying about it. Like 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 oh, build bridges with these with these these um these entities and these groups yeah, because yeah. because you're gonna get leverage that you can then pass on to the next motherfucker coming up uh through it. Game, you, know? man. you gotta play the game. You gotta yep. lean into some of these problems. We run from them. We don't go to the doctor. We don't mm -hmm. want to fucking deal with the police. We don't want to call the police when it's a problem. We definitely don't want to deal with the IRS. But if you're trying to open a brewery, trust me, you got to deal with the motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> so they know you, and you can have a conversation. Versus you find out that it's too late, and you ain't you ain't right, man. Like, Skinny, yeah. let's let's get some context. We gotta get our shit together. If we want to, we want to get back. We gotta get our shit together. Skinny, let's let's get some context on that. You guys have been trying to get your licenses and everything together. What what? How long has that process been trying to bring everything to fruition? Uh, I feel like it's about seven or eight months. Okay. Uh, it's not just the license and it's, it's, it's construction. M more than anything, it's, it's the finance place that speaks to you, mm. you know, that you can afford. You know, I think that as, as African-Americans, we're not going to start off with a 10, 15 barrel system. We're going to start off small because we don't know if niggas going to like the shit. 
You know what I'm saying? So we want we want to lean into that and let let we want to grow with the system is how we thought about it. So we're starting off small, but funding and financing was key. Uh, having a, a strong business plan that's written down in black and white, and not you ain't just talking about it over smoking weed, Hello. over the fire pit. You know, three times a week, but you got to write that shit down. You yep. got to get your finances in order. You got to get the uh, projections of what you plan on making, how much, how much you're trying to sell, how much that's going to cost. You got to convince people that that's what you want to do to get them to believe in you, to at least help you get some of the equipment or get some people that believe in you to give you equipment. You know, that's all at the beginning. And then you got to, you know, again, convince your, your building that you're getting. This is what you want to do and make the changes to it. So, you know, all of that happened. And then at, uh, because of COVID, you know, there's a backlog in the licenses and all of that. So mm-hmm. it's been about seven to nine months that we've been dealing with it hardcore. But, yeah. you know, like Benny came, you know, we have an event space. So as soon as we yeah, got yeah. there, we was able to start throwing dope events. And so, right. you know, it's a little bit different. We learned that from um, other breweries. Like, you know, that's how you offset it is throw events at your space. And that can help, you know, you raise awareness and, and get some revenue coming in. So you're not worried about all the, the time spent building it and not making any money, you know? And so we've dope. been blessed, you know, Atlanta's dope. You know, it's, it's a city of opportunity, the city of networking, you yep. know, and um, the, the, the African-American beer scene here is crazy more than anywhere else, you know what I'm saying? And um, we show love and support each other. So I think we've had an easier time opening up than I think some people were in other places of the country. So, you know. T.O. and Biddy's uh, certainly from concept to completion, opening your spot, like how long was that process? I mean, we still ain't open. <laughs> I mean, shit. Okay. That's been about six, six years. No, um, it's um again, we we me and Tio are are aiming for the, the big the big space, like you know, and I think it's because of all the time we've spent building this and seeing how big this could possibly be, we were like, fuck it, we're just gonna go for the 15, you know, barrel system, some ginormous space. And with that requires really, it requires a lot of capital. I mean, there's just, there's no ways around it. And we're not in a city that's like the backwoods of, nope, we're in Los Angeles. We're in Inglewood, the home of the new Rams and Chargers Stadium. Yep, yep, yep. We're asking for millions plus budget out the gate. You know, but we, it's like that. That's what we want to do. That's what we're committed to doing. That's what we're going to do. Um, what you want to do foreshadowing that is what we're going to do. And wait, wait, two, one second. And we've spent the years, like like uh, Skinny said, you gotta you gotta play the game. We have, and I don't want to call it a game because we have spent and dedicated a lot of time to getting to know the city of Inglewood, understanding the community, uh, the city council. But we have spent years going to council meetings, sitting in, listening to what the community has to say about the neighborhood, meeting all of the key members who approve everything and even having them see our face. I think there was a point me and Tio were at the, the city council at least two or three times a week just being there. So you know who Tio and Benny is when it's time to submit the paperwork and the permitting. They don't think. Are because you know what we've been doing. And I think there's a lot of humble, uh, there's a lot of ego checking when you when you do things like that, because most people don't want to put in that kind of work, but it is what it is. Like you got to yeah. do the work, you got to put in, the, put in the time. Yeah. This is not fly by night. Hey, y'all deserve that though, because y'all put in the work. Even like, even folks here in Atlanta are looking at y'all in Cali and respecting the grind and the hustle that y'all are doing. Y'all deserve a, a, you know, a production facility that can facilitate the the fact. You guys it on, the, on the west coast i applaud y'all i look up to y'all for what y'all been doing and it's like we, you know we're, we're walking and chewing gum we might be down in the south and we got a lot of help down here but you guys are holding it down on the west that's I right wonder, like, how many brewers that are black are out there that you know are looking up to y'all helping y'all out like is there any out there like what's what's that about um th- th- there are um you know we've been, we've been able to work closely with the uh, urban roots which is in sacramento um, good brothers. We even hollered at the homies at uh, Full Circle, which we know yeah. uh, are good friends of yeah. yours as well. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but to, to Benny's point, um, you know, our, <laughs> you know, it's funny. We had a really interesting day to where we had 
conversations with people who thought that we were anything less than community focused. And what I mean community, I mean in this craft beer community. And I, you know, we spent this whole morning like trying to express like our perspective and showing our receipts in terms of what we're doing in terms of affecting or, or bringing impact. You know, even launching a um, an initiative to help fund other black owned breweries. And ironically, um, an article on us came out in the Times, and 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 I would just literally read to you that the first lines of the, of the article. Crowns and Hops does not want to be the only Black-owned brewery you love. Wow. Period. Fire. When I tell you, we don't win unless Fire. they win. Right. We don't win. Fuck that, man. I'm not, I mean, if, if, I mean, do, do you realize we're less than 1% out of 8,500 breweries? Yeah. Do you realize how ridiculous that is? But even more to the point, how difficult it's going to be for us to overcome just to even get to 2% which means 160 breweries, which is a pretty tall order. Um, and, and if we're not focused on impacting that and dropping breadcrumbs and, and promoting, I mean, I, I could promise you, anytime we in Atlanta, we're going to make sure we tip our hats to Scales, to freaking Skinny, to Ale, to, to everybody in the community. That's, the and, yeah. I mean, that, that's what you do when you I go to someone seen, else's hood, right? I haven't seen many. I'm oh, sorry. Bro. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I hadn't seen many things bring uh, black people together like I've seen over this beer. Like, we've come mm -hmm. together yeah. from here to For LA. Real. It's like, bro, what, out, what you need from us? You know, it's very few questions asked what you need from us. And it's coming from all ways, from, from brothers in, in DC, um, Sankofa. I don't want to get the name yeah. of names because that's the homies. Yeah. Um, yeah. But <laughs> everybody's like, okay, you're in town. What, what can I do? Like, they what can I do up. for you? And it's bringing us together, man, in a way that I hadn't seen music do. I hadn't mm. seen any product bring us together like beer wow. has, you know. And it's just a simple, but beer is bringing us together in a, in a real nice way. I like it. Yeah. Better, than, better than the other way that brings us together, which is cops killing us. All right. It's, mm. yeah, it's, it's, a real, it's a genuine movement behind this beer. It's safer. We meet every Sunday. Shout out to Maurice Garland and um Swerve. The leaders. We we meet in we leaders of the brew school. We meet hey. around beer. He, he texted me today. He was like, "Yo, you need to come through on, on Sunday." He it's texted not me today. It's never I'm, been a problem. I'm hella jealous every fucking time I see a post about some <laughs> in beer community meetup, congregation events. I'm like, damn, we don't. Yeah. It's okay. Coming, and that is why our space has to be huge right. because there is no other space for us here in LA, it just does not exist for us. And we need a place where we can all just come at one time and just kind yeah. of be together because we, we don't get these little pockets, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. I'm sorry, man. It's so I'm nice to come to Atlanta to do that, man. For real, like, I might have to, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fly to on this trip. One well, thing, hey, you know what, though. I tell you what, if, if y'all came down here a little more than what y'all do, y'all would change so much of the the, uh, the vibe here to where uh, you would find what you're looking for that we can take that back to other places. You know what I'm saying? Like what Fresh Fresh was to us. That was in Pittsburgh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't see that coming. I missed the first year. But that, that changed my life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that many cool black people can hang out and all about beer and music. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, it was nuts. Yeah. Super it was crazy. Hey, look, like, and one thing, thing that's happening in the country, I want to be there. And, and, and one thing I want to say, that's what's happening. That's what's happening that they don't see coming. And when, right. once they see that company, they're not going to like it, but they're going to have to respect it. But, but you know what, one thing I will say about that event, when freaking Nappy Roots got on that stage, there was an event that was like two or three blocks away. Literally, everybody from that white event came over to Fresh Fest. And when I tell you the energy in that crowd at a black themed craft beer festival was bananas. It was bananas. Magical is the word I use. Oh, magical. Mike Potter, Mike Potter, man. Man, are y'all doing Blacktober Fest in, in North Carolina in October? We, we, we just hollered at Mike, uh, at, uh, at Mike today. Um, yeah, we're we'll, going to be there doing it again. We'll, hold, we'll on, hold on, hold on, hold on to, to the novices out here that are not familiar. Come on, give give us some game. What is Blacktober Fest? Come on now. Well, yeah. we, we can't speak completely to it. 
<laughs> can't speak completely to it, but um, okay, all right. A couple of people are launching events. We will oh, be at. Society. Uh, That's what you're saying, uh, Tia. Okay, you on some secret society shit right now? No, no, no. I'm just saying. I don't know. If there is a black beer event, we will be participating as yeah. we should because we <laughs> are need to be a part of every black beer event that happens. I don't care what city it is, we should be there supporting, promoting, pushing, bringing everybody together. So, but, 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 what, 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 I, but what I can tell you, uh, more, more uh, up and coming is on May 28th, your boy will be in Atlanta. Um, I, I got uh, I got four pallets of beer that I'm bringing with me. Uh, uh, Hop City, uh, May 28th, uh, happy hour. Jump off the game for Memorial Day weekend. Hop City, West End, let's go. After party in Atlanta, okay. After party, party in Atlanta, Atlanta. 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 Oh shit, it's official. It's official. <laughs> say say that. stupid. We got the room. Hey, Benny. It's done. On. I might have to come. I might come for oh, a game. Like, Wait a minute. You already have plans? Oh, yeah. What we got to do, man? <laughs> I'm going to drag Leighton out, Keenan. I'm going to get everybody out. We're going to get a whole oh, little group. Oh, everybody oh, come out. Look, we we, three, we have covering this holiday weekend the first one with everybody semi outside. So I'm gonna need you to all right. I mean, step May 28th, May 28th, May 28th Hop City. We vaccinated, West. man. We don't need no masks. Same, same. Let's get it. Smoke the weed, man. Let's do it. All right. So look, we also got a, we got we got four minutes left, guys. This went pretty quick. Um, I do want to know what, what both of these two amazing companies are, are excited about coming up in the next uh, the before the year is out. What are some of the things that you that you're looking to roll out? Just you know, tell the people like what, what's what's the next chapter with with the world opening up. Um, on our side, our we are laser focused on continuing to release amazing beer, getting it into the the spaces that we know our community exists, and most importantly, opening up this production facility. If all goes to plan. We are telling the universe we would love to have something open by Super Bowl of next year in Inglewood. Let's get it popping. We need to be a part of that experience. Um, but that's our focus: great products and opening this space. Yeah, and I would just add to that too for everybody just to keep following us. We have some stupid news to drop in a couple of weeks um, that, that that we're really ironing out. But but I tell you, it is a game changer. Okay. Um, and, and hopefully something that will not only impact us as, as a brand, but ultimately our industry um, is it, yeah. it, pretty huge. And um, and like I said, uh, May 28th, um, Hop City, Atlanta, Georgia, West End. Uh, we're going to turn up. Um, we're going to have uh, both HBC UIPAs out there, Urban Anomaly Stout, which is the Guinness killer, and uh, the Glow Up. <laughs> The glow up, which is your boy, uh, the collaboration with Jay Wakefield. So both will be nice. available, and uh, and dude, we love Atlanta, bro. And and again, shout out to Jim Price. One, uh, one more question before work. you did, before you before you let it go. Where can people in Atlanta find your product, or can we find uh, it? It, 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 will, it will be primarily at the Hop City, but we have a beer locator. So okay. as soon as we have the exact locations um, that it's available, uh, you could go to the website crownsandops.com, Go to the beer locator. Put in your zip code and you, it'll take you right to where we can be Fire. found in Atlanta. Fire. I'll be I'll be stocking up this weekend. All right, my brothers. Y'all, y'all give me give me the game. What y'all got? What we doing for the rest of the year, baby? Close this out, fam. So we just we just finished wrapping up our deluxe album to our 40 album that we dropped in September. It's called 40 Plus. Uh yeah. you know, us guys, we in our 40s hanging out, having fun doing hip hop and beer. So we're dropping that uh Juneteenth, the, that Friday of Juneteenth. We're gonna do a big uh, shindig here about that, celebrating, you know, just that. We're working on new music, uh, developing a few artists with our label, not regular. Um, right. And we're wrapping up our, our licensing issues right now. We have uh, building, and I want to say the Department of Revenue. And once that happens, we're tightening up our electrical in the back. And we're brewing by July. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, we open mid July, and we're selling beer all summer. Nice. We're gonna celebrate Napa Roots Day. We're doing nice. the Brownie Bash with Pontoon uh, in August. Forty acres. Forty acres. Uh, in a brew is the TV show that we're working on. That's coming out hopefully this fall. Word. We're gonna have fun just making beer and bringing hip hop to it, man. I love I love everything you guys are saying. I got one last question, and it, it doesn't have to be long at all. 
uh, just to put a little, little bow on the hip hop and beer, craft beer conversation, what would be you guys outside of yourself dream co collaboration with someone from hip hop? Doesn't necessarily have to be an artist. It could be a producer, it could be a graph artist. It could be someone, you know, just contributed heavily to the culture. What would be your dream collaboration with a craft beer? I go first. Me, Rihanna, if you're listening, <laughs> she is a huge beer drinker. Fire. Let's get some boss Let's female go. black women. Yeah, that's amazing. Labs going. That's a thing. We gotta call me. I that's got a thing. Craft beer. That's, a thing. that's a thing right there, Benny. A legitimate thing. I'm putting it in the universe. It's I coming. Like it. Rihanna, crowns and halves, holla, Benny. Let's do that, it. That would be I, I, I think I'd have to say K Dot. Easy, easy for me. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, I think, was huge to Pimp a Butterfly. I think was a transformative piece of art. Facts. Um, and, and and I feel like Benny and I try and represent that as it relates to just offering a scope, you know, as opposed to just saying that we're what we were before and uh, that we have much more to offer in the future. So uh, yeah, K Dot collab would be dope. Bye, uh, you gentlemen. Shit, we rappers already. I want to make a beer with crowns. Yeah, shit. Like, you, want, you said what? I want to make a beer with crowns and hops. Hey. That's happening no matter what. You gotta, there's gotta be someone. It doesn't have to be music. Yeah. It could be exactly. anybody. You could do a beer with Obama. And skinny. I started with, with God, Skinny Dad. God damn it. I started no. with not you, guys. I want to make a beer with crowns and hops. Crowns and hops. Y'all are wrong. None. It dropped right here. No label needed. Collab. We love y'all down here for real, man. Y'all are like rock stars in mm -hmm. our circle, man. People really appreciate what y'all doing. I agree with Skinny. I would love to. I, I could see the power in the room if we did a beer, man. It would just be great for it. Would be great a, for, a, if needed, bro. It would be great for our rap career. Listen, <laughs> listen, it listen. It would be great for our rap career. Like, we would get more streams because we fucking with crowds and hops. That's look, 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 look. Before yeah. we let that go, Keenan the Maven got a little seed money. So I want a little piece of this collabo on this specific <laughs> one. Come on in. So yeah. when the plan comes down together. Here. Yes. A note to it, though. A we real, did it. I, would, I would love to, like, to get Jay Z, like going for the top, like Jay Z to come in and say, "Yeah, I see what's going on. I see what's going on with black people in beer. I want to help move it forward." Oh, that'd be crazy. I love it. I love yeah. it. I think we can close there. He would, collab with, he would collab with the whole craft beer industry. Yeah, it would be a whole craft beer. <laughs> it wouldn't be about Atlanta at that point. It would be about the whole craft beer. It'd be, it'd be it'd be about creating the infrastructure that 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 propels this thing forward. I understand. Exactly. I say it all the time. If Drake, Jay Z, Migos, Two Chains, if any one of them opened up a brewery for real, like they really opened up a brewery or got behind somebody that was black that knew how to brew and believed in them, and they got them that twenty barrel system with those forty barrel fermenters. And he had the knowledge and know how to get a distribution deal and get a brand that could get out there to the total wines and moors all over the country or the region. That artist would make millions of dollars year round. Out of here. Thought about he that. said, "Skinny said it." Right. I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Ain't got to be us. We gonna be good. We good. But Don't worry we about that. Yeah, we good. Look here. Look here. You hear that? that? Hey. You hear that? That's I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the building. Good, like, I'm here for all of this. I'm about that life. I'm about you saw that. what we did for Carl Canal and Cross Colors. You saw what we do for Gucci. We know what right. we do for uh, any other brand that we support that is not ours. You know what we do for that brand. So imagine right. if you all just said, okay, we're going to start drinking beer today. Well, we're we going we to produce the first beer of God beer. Ooh. Ooh. Man, man. It's easy money, Ooh. man. We just got to get it right now. I'm going to pull up. Let's go. That's a thing. All right. This is it, guys. May 28th, we all connected. We're going to continue this conversation to all the people. All right. All right. Amazing conversation. Thank you for attending. Thank you, Jim Price, again. And uh, we appreciate the time. Let's get to this money. <laughs>